Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I am bringing you guys this video on a cyber deck build that I'd done, uh, as you can see from the title of the video, and this is it. It's all in a little Plano box, and the coolest thing about it is that this Plano box is waterproof. Um, it's also, um, I also opted out of drilling any holes into it, so there's no um, damage to the actual thing. Uh, everything is just kind of setting inside of there. Um, I, I need to find a, a slightly better solution for some parts of it, but we'll talk about that later. For the most part, this is the device. This is the device that I have, the CyberDeck. Let's go ahead and open it up. And let's see what's inside. So inside of here, I have a Raspberry Pi 400, which I had just kind of lying around not doing anything. Um, I have other Raspberry Pis that I use for other projects, but the Raspberry Pi 400, I didn't really have any good project for it. So I decided to throw into this. So that's why it's here. And up here, we have the monitor. This is a touchscreen, 10 inch touchscreen monitor, which is fairly um, useful, especially in this kind of build. Since I already have the keyboard and all it needs is just kind of a touch interface or some kind of interface to navigate. And over here, we have a, um, I forget the name of it, but these are just basically keystone um, inserts inside of it that allow me to get the USBs here. Uh, these two USBs actually connect the Raspberry Pi 400 over here. So I have this routed from the Raspberry Pi 400 back to here. And this one actually gets me to the power bank that's back here, which allows me to charge the power bank without having to take the whole thing apart. And of course, here is the ethernet and that connects to the Raspberry Pi over here. Once again, just kind of want to have everything in one spot. And uh, this remaining port here is actually for the USB for the touch on the monitor. And of course you have the power and you have the display that's all connected through here. So pretty much everything is um, routed up back through here. Uh, there's a little on and off switch for the monitor and the Raspberry Pi has its own on and off switch down here, as you can see there. And let's go and take a look at the back of all this so we can do a tour of the inside of the device. And we'll zoom you in. So in here, we have our power supply and kind of a few things to talk about. Uh, the main thing of note is that this is a 40,000 uh, milliamp power bank, which is pretty useful. It gives me a lot of power, gives me a lot of usage time with the Raspberry Pi 400 and the monitor connected uh, together. Uh, here's the power for the Raspberry Pi 400, it's just a USB. This is the power for the monitor. So the Raspberry Pi is taking five volts from the power supply from the power bank I mean and it, it works on its five volts but the five volts that are coming to the monitor are actually not enough it needs 12 volts instead so this is actually a step up converter to convert it from five volts to 12 volts and that connects into this little uh, barrel jack connector which allows me to connect this to the switch so I can turn the monitor on and off because once the Raspberry Pi 400 are off or is off and the monitor is off, it allows the power bank to go to sleep, so it's not burning any power that way, so it's not passively uh, soaking any power. So that's pretty good, it's pretty useful. Not really much else to talk about through here, except for maybe the connections if you really want to see those. Uh, these are all just in the back. <laughs> I mean, it's not really anything special. Just just using the, uh, the normal thing that you use for an outlet when you have the keystones that you want to use. And all this, this frame here is actually just, um, <laughs> poster board that I had lying around. Um, I, I don't really have a 3D printer, so I can't do, do any fancy 3D printing stuff, but with poster board and an X-Acto knife and some uh, hot, oh, with a hot glue gun and some command strips, you can do a lot. You can do a lot. And also some Lego tape, which I still had laying around. So let's go ahead and uh, turn this on. The reason why the monitor is still detachable is because in order to turn the power bank on I have to get back here and press the button so you can see it's on 87% cool and we'll put this back in sets in like that we will turn both the monitor and the Raspberry Pi on so the Raspberry Pi is powering up down there as you can see and the monitor is doing its own power up thing and sorry for the focus it's gonna get a little weird for a few moments but uh, it'll be back we will be back so while we're waiting for all this to go through, this is like I said, a 10 inch touchscreen. Uh, if we're talking about components and cost of everything, the touchscreen itself is 150 bucks. The Raspberry Pi 400 is a $70 device. So between those two, I mean, you're looking at already breaking your $200 price range. The power bank was another 50 bucks. The uh, actual Plano case that it's in, this is a $30 case. And 
talk about parts and components, other type stuff, wires, connectors. You're, you're looking at maybe another $60 on top of that. So it's not necessarily a cheap CyberDeck, but it is definitely a usable CyberDeck because it's portable. And look, it's on. It's ready to go. And the touchscreen is there. It exists. So one of the key things I wanted to make sure I talked about uh, why I want to switch over. Ooh, it's too low. Uh, sorry. Why well, I wanted to switch over to um, zooming in on the monitor was that it, there's a script that you can have to do right click uh, with a long press. So if I do a long press, I can get a right click to uh, show up on the monitor. It's very useful. It's extremely useful because one of the issues that the speaker has is that the speaker, uh, there's speakers built into this monitor and the speaker itself, uh, if it goes too loud, the monitor will actually start shutting off. So there we go. So if I switch this over to HDMI and I turn the stuff on here. So I'm just gonna go into the internet, go into uh, play some lo-fi jams and let that go. Uh, it, it's serviceable, it's serviceable. So like the speaker's built into the monitor, you can play through your music through the monitor, it's serviceable. Um, it's muffled because it's uh, it's bumped up against a power bank that's back there. And also it's coming out from back there where it's nothing else to kind of give it any uh, speaker air flow. But if I turn this volume up, once the bass starts playing pretty loud, that's where the monitor loses or doesn't get enough power and it starts power cycling cutting off. So that's one of the issues that you have with using this particular setup. Um, it You can get the volume pretty loud before it does that, but still you run into the issue to where that's all kicking in. So that's one of the um, drawbacks of all of this. So the fix and the solution to that is that you can actually just use a Bluetooth, Bluetooth device. So uh, this is where the right click comes in. So let me close that out of YouTube. And if I hold down to right click, that gives me this. And I can go into the iHome speak Bluetooth speaker, which is over here. Yeah, power it up. I'm powering it up. It's being powered up. Oh, it's yelling at me. Hold on. And pretty much once it connects, then I can turn the Bluetooth speaker up as loud as I want to and kind of have the volume pumping, you know, just, just en enjoy my tunes. Uh, oh, it's being difficult. So this is funny because uh, before I was recording this, Connected. I had to re-record it. And it was giving me a really hard time with the long press to right click. Now it's giving me no hard time. So that's pretty good. Um, so the Bluetooth speaker is connected. Now I can go back and play my music and play my volume. And, or sorry, play, you know, if I'm looking at a video or playing a game, have it play through Bluetooth speaker. You don't have to worry about the power issues. It works fine. It works great. Works well. So there you go. Speaker's playing music. Woo. All right, cool. So let's not, let's not get demonetized here. <laughs> demonetized, like I'm monetized. Um, so, so let me go ahead and close out of that. Uh, so it's pretty serviceable. You can do a whole bunch of really cool things. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to do some emulation stuff with it a little bit later to see if that actually brings out about any uh, really good use of it uh, for me. Because I, I feel like having a portable emulation station would be really nice. Uh, you know, plug a controller or two into it, maybe get into some of your games, because it's going to play up to, I think it can play up to PSP, I think it's the highest uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 can play. It can play Dreamcast, PSP, and some Nintendo 64, but that's neither here nor there. The main thing is that it has its use cases. Uh, one of the things I do like about it, one of the pros of it too, is that it can kind of open up all the way like this. This is sometimes a useful position for it to be in. So you can kind of have it sitting in your lap while you're sitting in a chair. You can type on the keyboard and see the monitor pretty clearly. One of the drawbacks though, is that because this is a normal hinge in general, um, there's no, there's nothing stopping it to keep it in like this very convenient like laptop form. It kind of just falls under its own weight. So a solution that you can have to that is taking something solid like maybe this power bank because it is currently sitting on a very uh, smushy bed um, and just kind of prop it up and that way you can get your angle that you need so you can kind of sit there and use your device sitting in front of it uh, but outside of that I mean it, it's a pretty pretty solid useful build it gives me something to do with the Raspberry Pi 400 it is a device that I will literally just turn on put some music in the background and just kind of let it run because it's just so cool it's just so cool 
Um, I wouldn't. I mean, I, I guess you can kind of call this a cyber deck, but you can. I mean, it, it, it's pretty much more like a portable Raspberry Pi <laughs> that you can run um, without having to plug into the wall. So that's useful, and it has a forty thousand milliamp battery, which is even nicer. Uh, so you can use it for other things in case of emergency, and it's in a waterproof case, and it's functional. So I think it's overall a win-win-win. So anywho, uh, I'm going to go and cut the video there. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'll try to put any parts that I've used in the description. So that way, if you really want to build your own exactly as I have here, uh, you can. Uh, like I said, this is just all poster board. This actual border here. So you could 3D print some stuff if you wanted to get your own components. I sadly don't have any files for you. Um, so you kind of have to spitball it and uh, measure things out. So apologies for that ahead of time. Uh, but it works. It works. It fits. And it's functional. So that's that's really cool. So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and close this up. And we'll cut our video once that's done. Boom. Look at that. Bam. Done. Ready to go. All right, thank you guys very much for watching, and as always, I will see you guys whenever.